not matter if you use a DSLR or if you use your phone for documentation if you don't know how to use your internal accessories correctly for documentation purposes. That is why I'm making this video on how to use internal accessories for dental documentation. Uh, first of all, coming to the general criteria as to how to decide what to purchase for in your internal accessories. Um, generally speaking, the cheek retractors have to be quite rigid as well as transparent. That would be ideal. Your contrasters or mirrors, they should be rigid, completely rigid and they should not be flexible at all. Secondly, they should be contra-angled. If you are buying mirrors, make sure that they are front surface coated and not behind surface coated if you want to avoid the ghost shadow or the halo effect as we call it. Because that appears as a blur in your images. Uh, we noticed that all the dentists had to uh, hunt for all these ac accessories individually. That's why at Dental Photography School we thought that we should come up with a complete set of internal accessories that prompted us to come up with something called as the Magic Box which has all the internal accessories required by any dentist for any kind of documentation purposes. So let's see what do we have in the Magic Box. Inside the Magic Box we have uh, transparent cheek retractors, one single unit V-shaped cheek retractor, a pair of C-shaped cheek retractors and uh, two sectional cheek retractors or quadrant retractors as we call it. After that we have um, uh, stainless steel rigid heavy duty mirrors which has a large size and a small size. Make sure uh, that before you, start, before you autoclave it you peel the uh, stickers and then autoclave it. Uh, we've put stickers on it so that it does not get scratches and uh, the moment you get it's like absolutely scratch proof. So this is the full large occlusal mirror. Then you get a sectional mirror or a sectional. Uh, this, this is the perio part of it and this is the quadrant part of the mirror. So most of the dentistry that um, most of the documentation has to be done with this mirror. I use this mirror 90 to 95% of the times and then we have the periodontal mirror. We also have the sectional contrasters and then we have the full arch occlusal contrasters. We also have the grey card and a microfiber cloth. So this is the complete requirement of intraoral accessories that each and every dentist or the dental clinic must be having. Um, in the clinical practice. Um, so I use this one set for one patient only. Um, before you want to autoclave, make sure that you put the internal accessories like mirrors and contrasters. You just wrap it in a soft facial wipe, that's the dry facial wipe, and then you pack it in the sterilization pouches, and then you put it for autoclaving. Make sure that you use steam type autoclaves. Don't use class B autoclave because you don't want to remove the coating of the contrasters or you don't want the cheek retractors to melt. Now let us have a look in detail as to when to use which internal accessory. For example, we use the V-shape cheek retractor whenever we are documenting the molar relations or the canine relations of uh, say suppose if I'm recording the right side, I use this on the right side and I use the sectional contrastor. Uh, convex aspect on the contralateral side um, so that in addition to good retraction uh, I also get a black background in front of the uh, anteriors that gives it quite an aesthetic result. Um, usually people who don't use this they might you might be able to see that uh, cheek retractors on the opposite side or maybe you can see cheeks or mucosa on the opposite side which is not quite pleasing. So I suggest that you use this V-shaped cheek retractor to record your molar relations and on the contralateral side we use the sectional contrastor. So uh, you can use this for canine guidance as well. Next we have a pair of C-shaped cheek retractors in which uh, we'll be using this in maximum intercuspation shots. We'll be retracting both the sides. Make sure that the retraction is forwards and laterally. Lastly, we have something called as the sectional cheek retractor or the quadrant cheek retractor. So we have one cheek retractor for the first quadrant, the same one is for the third quadrant. And then we have one cheek retractor for the second quadrant. I'm sorry. So this goes for the second quadrant and it works for the fourth quadrant as well. Uh, whenever you want to record full arch occlusal images, we use both the cheek retractors and retract only the upper lip along with the full arch occlusal mirror. 
So whenever you use uh, mirrors, make sure that you use only the sectional cheek retractors and not the full, full C-shaped cheek retractors. If you want to record full occlusal images, try to use the bigger side of the mirror, which also has convexities on both the sides, which helps you get even more retraction. Uh, for pediatric patients, of course, you might have to use a smaller one, or patients which have limited mouth opening, you can use the small side. But for most of my documentation in my clinic, I use the quadrant mirrors, which I use it for 95% of the time. For example, if I want to record something on the uh, second quadrant, say, so I'll retract only the second quadrant and I place the sectional mirror on the fourth quadrant. Uh, because it's contra-angle, I can also retract, sorry, when I record the second quadrant, I put it on the third quadrant and push the third quadrant down. So that in addition to giving me a reflected image, it also helps me get some good retraction. That's why they have to be absolutely rigid. So I use this part of the mirror most of the times. Make sure that you use only the convex aspect of the mirrors. Concave aspect is used um, mostly in periodontal cases. So this is the perio side of the mirror. So this goes uh, easily inside the mouth and then this convexity can go inside the palate and the periodontist can record the palatal flap or if you want to record the lingual flap in the mandibular arch it, it goes inside the floor and retracts the tongue and then you can get the uh, lingual flaps very very nicely with this mirror so I use the sectional mirror as well as the full occlusal mirror only with uh, these sectional cheek retractors. Coming on to the aesthetic aspect, we give contrasters as well. So the sectional contrasters like we've already seen is used for uh, the buccal images to record the molar and canine relations. But the narrower aspect, the narrower part is useful to record the lower anterior aesthetic cases. So it retracts the tongue as well as gives a beautiful contrast in front of your lower anteriors. An absolute must have for all the aesthetic dentists. Coming on to the full arch occlusal contrast, for people who are into smile designing which is digital usually require the full arch to be recorded uh, in front of a black background. That's when we use the bigger side of the contrastor. However, for most of the routine aesthetic cases, I prefer to use the small side of the full arch occlusal contrastor only. So this is absolutely beautiful. It does not give any glare. Just in case it gives you a glare, just treat it by one degree and the glare must go off. Coming on to the absolute must-have for all the dentists who do a lot of prosthesis in the clinic, that's the grey card. So this is the microfiber cloth, I forgot to mention that if, if there's a splatter of blood, saliva or if you want to clean your accessories, don't scrub it with cotton tissue or gauze piece, just scrub it with this microfiber cloth and try to prevent um, scratches on your contrasters or the mirrors, an absolute must-have for every intraoral accessory user. Coming back to the grey card, we have... Um, uh, three cards inside this box. One is a white card, one is a black card and one is a grey card as you can see. Uh, so we use this during the shade uh, making process or shade selection process and uh, after that we have to do a couple of post processing steps which uh, the instructions of which are already given in the manual inside the magic box. An absolute must have if you want to remove any color cards that have appeared in your images and if you want to achieve perfect communication with your lab so make sure you have an 80 percent neutral gray card and then you have a white uh, white card as well as a black card uh, which you can use to uh, take pictures of your processes it's absolutely helpful so it has a shining part and a matte part whenever you keep the prosthesis on this and you don't want a reflection of the prosthesis we use the matte side but if you like showing reflections of the prosthesis on the black surface I suggest that you use the shining part of the black card. So that's with the grey card. Uh, so the how to use the grey card, the instructions have already been uh, given to you. How to autoclave the magic box, what precautions you should be taking while using the magic box are all there inside the instruction manual. So um, this is an overall outlook of the magic box. I hope and wish that all of you liked it and if you wish to have one of these you can log on to our website that's www.dentalphotographyschool.in or you can always contact our front desk on 9769606450 or 8655225522 i'll be looking forward to 
help you if you have any questions with regards to intra oral accessories or even dental photography. For this video only so much, I will be looking forward to see you soon. Thank you.